I hope you're having a fantastic day. I thought I'd come in and teach you how to check your vendor center. So about a month ago, we did a training on how to make sure you are checking your customer center. Today, it's all about your vendor center. So before you go to your tax professional or you file your taxes, there are some areas you should be checking to make sure you don't have mistakes. One of those is your vendor center. And so vendors are what? Do you remember what vendors are? They are the people and places you spend money. If you're here live, let me know. You can see and hear me. We are going to get started in just a minute. I thought I'd go through and show you what reports to be looking for and kind of what to be checking to make sure you don't have mistakes. So often people will come to me and they'll say, I have bills in my vendor center that I don't even know why they're there. <laughs> you can let me know if you're here live if you have that. Okay. So I'm going to walk through the reports. Let me know, do you check your vendor center on a regular basis? And do you know if you have any mistakes? And I'm going to teach you how to check to see if you have any. Okay. So, sorry, just whacked my mouse. Um, let me share my screen with you. I'm going to share both desktop and online today. So you should be seeing my QuickBooks. Okay. So first things first, what is a vendor? We always want to start with the basics to make sure that we're all speaking the same language. So vendors, which you'll see right here on the desktop version, vendors over here. If you've come to one of my workshops before, you've probably heard me talk about this. It's some of the, one of the things I love to make sure you guys know, because, hey, we can't build upon a foundation that's not solid, right? So then vendors over here, they're all the same thing. And vendors, I always say, are the people and places you spend money. It is your independent contractors. It's where you buy your supplies. It's your utility bills, right? So anywhere you spend money, where it goes, other than paying your employees or giving your customers a refund, is a vendor. Okay? Sound good? Does that make sense? Let me know if you're here live. If you're catching the replay, make sure you let us know that you got the replay too. I love to go back and check. So, first things first, do we have mistakes in our vendor center? How do you know? What would you check? Let me know. If you're doing this, what are you checking to know when you're entering your data. Do you go into your vendor center often and like look at what we call, this, this area is called the vendor center. And you can come in here and you'll see all the different vendors that you spend money with, okay? And depending on which way you have it sorted will depend on how your list shows. So you'll notice that when I click on balance, the list shows in a different order than when I click on name. So when we click on name, it goes in alphabetical order. When we click on balance, it will go in the order that is in balance, right? So there's a few things that you may or may not know. One is you can drop down your little drop down and you'll have all vendors, active vendors, vendors with opening balance, okay? So if we're talking about only the vendors that you owe money to, so one of the ways to know if you have a mistake is you come in here and you can look at this and see vendors with an opening balance. And if the only vendors that are in there are vendors or people and places you owe money to, um, is only listed who you actually owe, whether it's sales tax, whether it's an actual vendor, your utility company, whatever, then there'll be a dollar amount here, right? So the name is this to the left, to the right is the balance. So if in your vendor center you have negatives or you have dollar amounts, but you don't actually owe the customer, that means what? You have a mistake, okay? So this is one way to check. For those of you, let me move a couple things around. For those of you who are online users, your vendors, sometimes it gets a little tricky because you're like, I don't see vendors in the list because the online version is always changing up. But expenses are still vendors, okay? You can see it here also when you click on the plus, they're vendors. So when you're here, you can go straight down to vendor or if you just click on expense and it populates, you click over here to vendor. Either one is going to get you to the same place. And then what you're going to notice is anyone who has open bills or overdue right here, you're going to click on that. Okay. So you can click on overdue. I'll just show you overdue. You can click on open and it will show you open. You can also filter yours by what you click on. So if you click on opening balance, it'll filter it in order of opening balance. Or if you want to just click on your vendors, clear all your filters, you can always click on opening balance and it will always sort it that way as well. If you don't want to click on these others, but you just kind of want to see them. All vendors, um, the ones that you owe money to, will always go to the top. 
depending on which way you click on it. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So this is one way to start looking just to see as you're in there, like, are these vendors people that we actually owe money to? Do we really have credits? What's going on? Because what happens a lot of times is you'll just go in and start entering things, and you, especially when you don't really, when you're first learning how to use QuickBooks, and you don't really know what's happening. Okay, so bills are going to show up in here as an, you owe the customer later. What is another way to say vendors are also that you owe bills is also called what? It's kind of a trick question. I don't know if I explained that clearly. Accounts payable, right? So customers that owe you is accounts receivable. It's they owe you money. Vendors that you owe, that's considered a liability in accounting for simplistic ways to explain it, is also called accounts payable, okay? So some of you may or may not be using the inner bill feature and pay bills. If that's the case, you'll typically not have amounts in here if you're not using inner bills. So the way these amounts show up for bills is by you entering a bill and then that's just letting you know that you owe the customer, right? The same is true for desktop users. Let me shrink up my little thing here. I have all these multiple screens, okay? So for, um, that was online users. For desktop users, when you come in and you enter a bill, you'll also be creating accounts payable. Let me close a few screens. Does this make sense? Let me know if you're here live. This is where you use inner bills or you come here and you hit inner bills or I mean, there's always different ways to get there. But when you do that, it allows you to track behind the scenes in QuickBooks who you owe. See, vendors and payables are considered accounts payable. That's what the AP stands for. And it's a liability account. It will then show up on your balance sheet, right? So the thing about bills is it's a two-step process. So you enter a bill first, whether you're desktop or online. And then if you want that functionality, you have pay bills. What are the benefits of using inner bills? If you're in a cruel based business, meaning it will show up on your profit and loss at the moment you enter the transaction versus cash is when the money's actually paid out, right? So that's the benefit of using inner bills. But commonly what happens is you don't necessarily know that you're checking to make sure that the only thing sitting in here, which is what we're talking about mainly today, I just want to give you some more like behind the scenes information. The only customers, like the rest of your customers should show zero unless you owe them, okay? So only the vendors that you owe money to should ever have a balance unless you're just behind on your QuickBooks and you're like, yeah, I just, I'm still catching up. I got a little behind. Then that might be why they have a balance. Does that make sense? Let me know. So what are some of the reports that you can start pulling and what would you be looking for to also know if you have mistakes? Okay. To start seeing like, why are those amounts sitting there? So one of the reports that I love is going to be, you go under reports, vendors and payables for desktop users. And I like either of these two reports, unpaid bills detail. And what this is going to do, similar to when I was teaching you about how to check for the customers, it's going to separate it by each vendor. So it's going to say Ace Hardware, in this example, it's a sample file has a $50 credit and another $50 credit. And now we have also two bills in there for them. So their overall balance, even though we owe them with two bills of $200, because we also have $100 worth of credits, our balance is $100. So what we're doing is we're going in and we're looking to see what does our system say has been entered or is also open versus what is hopefully sitting in your file filing system in your bills to be paid. The only thing that should be in here is what is current, okay? So I want you to go in when we're done and you're watching this, go in and start, take notes now and go and apply it later or you can always catch the replay, but go in and start checking for these. Is this true? Is this, you're also looking for old invoices, ones that are way old dated that you're like, mm, that's probably an error. You're also looking for small amounts that are left. You're looking for credits that need to be applied that you know should have been applied already, or there's a mistake, right? You're also looking for if you have any credits where it says bill payments, but there's no bill to even be matched up to. It's just sitting there. That's why you end up with a credit balance is because 
you've applied, you've created a payment without having a bill to apply it to, right? So that's what you're looking for when you pull this report. Now you have two options. You can pull this report, the unpaid bills detail, or the other report that I really like is the vendor balance detail. The reason I like this one is because it gives you both sides. So if you have any zero um, bills in there that are zero balance, but have never been cleaned up or removed, they'll be sitting in there. So this gives you a little more depth of exactly what's happening and also by each individual vendor. So you can kind of go in and go, what's going on? Do I need to clean this up or is everything good? Um, I do prefer between the two, the unpaid bills detail, because it only gives you the stuff that's actually open that you do need to deal with. So for online users, how are you gonna find this report? Let me know, have you pulled this report and are you going to pull it? Is this something that you're gonna go and check into? So under reports, you're gonna scroll down. So you're looking for headlines, right? Like for online users, yours are really like, what type of reports are these? So this is business overview. We're gonna keep scrolling down. Who owes you? That would be your customers, right? So we're looking for who we owe money to. So we're going to keep scrolling down sales and customer. Nope. Keep going. What you owe. Sounds good to me. And then you're going to go here, unpaid bills. And you're going to select it. And you're going to go in and you're going to go, oh, why do I have a $75 payment that has still a bill that needs to be applied? That's an issue. Something I need to fix. Yes, the difference in the balance is zero, as you'll see here. But this is showing that you still have it open. And then you scroll down. You go, okay, do I owe these bills? And you just go through and you look at them. And if you have any bill payment checks as well that have a dollar amount or you have a small invoice balance that's really shouldn't be there, you know, maybe you accidentally messed up paying your, your vendor by a certain amount or your discount was done wrong, then you look for those. And this is what I want you to be checking for, okay? Let me know. Do you have any of these going on in yours that you know of for sure, like just off the top of your head, you're like, oh yeah, I definitely have some vendor issues let me know. I'm curious. Did this help you? And is it something you want to check? I don't see the comments for whatever reason. They're not coming through. So let me click on my stuff just to make sure that I catch up. Do you have any questions about what you learned? If you do have, I'll tell you this, if you do have any stuff, errors, I'm going to be doing a special training for my QuickBooks Simplified community in May. It's not going to be open publicly to be able to attend, but if it's something that you need help with, make sure you get on the list at quickbooksimplified.com. Let me add that for you so you can see it. So if you're like, I kind of need help cleaning this up, I realize I have some mistakes. I'll put it here for you so you can see it. We'll be doing some special key training. We, we focus in the community on, we do monthly training in there, and every month we focus on an area to clean up. So last month we cleaned up customers. This month we're going to be talking about vendors. Um, but it's not going to be open publicly. So if that's something you want to make sure you get to attend, go and join the waiting list. I'll send you a personal invite uh, right before we do the training. Otherwise, we'll be opening it up later on um, later in May. But if you'd like to attend this training, let me know. Do you have any errors in your QuickBooks? No, hello. No, I don't. Congratulations. Yes. So you'll mainly have mistakes if, I was just looking to see your comments, if you use interbill. So if you you can have mistakes still in there if you use um, your payments, but that's a little different issue. So we're going to be talking about, I, I was outlining the class actually today. Yes, I do. Payments not attached to bills. Yeah. So we'll be talking about how to apply those. So I went through today and I was outlining what we're going to be talking about. You want me to share with you kind of so you guys know what topics we're going to cover. So for some of you, you might have credit cards where you didn't watch one of my trainings yet, so you don't know, but when you enter in your credit cards and you then, when you're entering it and you're reconciling and you move it over to a bill, when it asks you, do you want to enter this as a bill? And let's just say you owe $2,000 on your credit card. What can happen is you'll make a payment of say only 200 instead of 2000. You just make up a installment. You don't pay it off for the month. When you enter that as a bill in QuickBooks, it moves it from the credit card as a liability into accounts payable as a liability, which I don't recommend doing. And so one of the things I'll be teaching is if you've noticed you, one of the issues you have is your credit card when you're looking at this list and one of the list items is your credit card. I think we have one in our sample training file over here so I can show you. 
we're going to talk about how do you fix those, right? So I don't recommend entering bills for credit cards unless you only enter it for the amount you're actually going to pay or go back and adjust it, okay? But if you have a credit card, you don't want to be doing that. That's not what I recommend. So I have a little sample that we'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about how to clean up old, really old bills. We're going to be talking about how to apply payments to your bills. So if you have that issue, um, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Going back and cleaning up and moving payments. So sometimes what happens is when you take over somebody's books, their stuff doesn't balance accurately, right? So I taught this before, but I'll show it to you again. When you're in here, whether you're a desktop user or online, one of the things that you're going to want to make sure you're doing, you can do this on your own, is to come over here to the actual transaction detail. And I drop this down and I click balance detail. What that will give you is where exactly, which are zeroed out, and then where is the $2,000 actually sitting in this example that shows it needs to be paid, okay? So what happens sometimes is somebody years ago, before you took over the books or before you know you learned how to do it accurately, will have old errors, old data. And so one of the processes that you need to go through sometimes is going back and looking up like were payments. So sometimes what happens is people just apply the payment to just any bill versus the bill that it actually was supposed to go to. So you're going to learn how to adjust the payments. We're also going to be talking about how to apply open credits. So one of the differences inside customer center is when you have a, where you need to apply the payment, when you open this up, you have to look and see, did, where did it go? What needed to happen? And there's a process to applying credit memos. So there's a difference between applying payments to bills than credit memos to bills. So we'll be talking about that. Um, make sure you're looking for any, when you pull up the report, what do you want to be checking? I just want to summarize this so you guys know, so you can look to see if you have any errors so you can start cleaning them up as well. So you're looking for credit memos, any invoices that are old, any invoices you don't owe, as well as any bills, payments that weren't matched to an, to an actual bill. So for those of you who need help and support, I look forward to seeing you. I always love to give you guys the little like trainings. Some of you are going to go through and what's exciting is you're going to go, yes, I only have in here what I need and make sure you celebrate that, right? Celebrate every little win, everything that you're learning that you're applying and the little tips and tricks that we give you guys and the how-to training. And I look forward to seeing you. Did any of you guys get a chance to watch? We did a training last week. Um, the last couple of tips that we've done is on depreciation. I wanted to do some like year end, how to make sure you did your depreciation correctly, how to also do your owner's equity. Did you guys get a chance to watch that video that we did? Let me know in the chat. I will make sure to uh, share here the links for the videos that we did, both for online and desktop, for how to make sure you're closing out your equity at the end of every single year. And I will be doing a tip next on making sure you're closing out with your closing, closing your actual books and making sure you add a password to make sure now that you've most likely done your taxes and you've entered in your depreciation, you've done your closing entries, what is the next step for that? So I'm going to be doing a tip and trick on that. If you have any other questions or things that you want to be learning, always give me your suggestions below. We'll add them to our ideas and our list. Thank you for being part of my community. And I hope you go in and start checking your vendor center and either go, okay, I made a mistake and then try to figure out what happened to it. If you need support, join us on our training. And if you have no mistakes, celebrate that as well. I'll also put the link above and below for the how to process and check for your customer center in case you missed that training. Have an easy and I'll see you soon.